So we're here with Dan Evans here at the Da Vinci School of Arts in Northeast Portland. And uh, we're at the Water Garden and uh, it's raining. How appropriate. Yes. And we call it Water Garden because what we're doing here is we've taken a piece of land that was not usable. It was an abandoned tennis court and it was just concrete. And we've uh, removed the concrete and the students designed a garden space that would accept the rainwater from these three portable classrooms and the parking lot. Now normally this rainwater would go into the sewer system and we know living in Portland that we have these combined sewers and the sewer system here just uh, doesn't need any more rainwater. Certainly doesn't need to treat it because it's clean. When we uh, approached uh, the Bureau of Environmental Services four years ago, we had an idea that we wanted to build a garden here and uh, take the rainwater off the uh, roofs and off the uh, parking lot. And uh, so they, they were interested and so we began planning. It took us a year to plan it, took us a year to build it. And this is uh, the fourth year since we finished the building of the uh, water garden. Uh, <laughs> these students uh, are volunteers to come out and tell you a little bit about the water garden. Uh, today they are performing, because this is an arts magnet, they're performing in a dance performance. These are dancers and students at the Vinci School. And uh, they are users of the garden. Uh, they help maintain the garden and they can tell you a little bit about uh, what we've done out in the garden this year because we used the garden when we studied animals this year in uh, life science. My name is Lily Wood and I'm an 8th grader at Da Vinci Arts Middle School. Hi, I'm Georgia Wiley and I'm also an 8th grader here. These two tanks here um, are, they store rainwater like it is right now raining. The water comes off the roofs and goes into these two tanks, which then comes out of this black pipe and that white dragon and fills up the pond. And when the pond overflows, the water pours down into a little river type stream bank over there and you have a little river. And that river goes into, on the far side, some wetlands and then you can look at little other animals and life in there. So you see the waterfall with the three tiers. What happens here is the water from the pond is recirculated through those three shelves. And when it goes through the shelves, it's cleaned and it's called a flow form. And it cleans through those shelves and then comes back into the pond. So it's a whole recirculating regeneration process with the water. My name is Bridget Emard. I'm an eighth grader at Da Vinci Arts Middle School. And right now, these students are fishing for insects in this pond. And some of the insects you will find in here will be water scorpions, water boatmen, and sometimes dragonfly nymphs. There have been several fish. We had one large fish named Moby, but he was eaten by a great blue heron a while back. My name is Lauren Hestan and I'm a sixth grader here at Da Vinci Arts Middle School. And this is our wonderful stream. This stream exhibits um, 750,000 gallons of overflowed rainwater from our pond into a second pond, and um, which normally would go into the sewer system, but uh, goes back into the earth to be used for our plant life at the Da Vinci Water Garden. So. Hi, I'm Sarah from Da Vinci and I'm an eighth grader. And right next to me is the biosoil where the water from the parking lot flows down into and meets up with the stream. And what happens is that when it rains, the water from the parking lot, it gets flows off the curb and then down here where this native plant life is, and all these plants are native right here. And what happens is that when the water flows down here, these plants, they, it, the plants and the biosoil, it cleans out whatever oil or something might be in the water because, of course, the cars might leave some traces of gasoline in the water. And the reason why the water doesn't just go straight to the pond is that the oil or whatever that might be in the water might hurt the animals. So it just flows down here and then meets up with the stream and then goes down to the wetlands. Now what we're looking into here is a living machine. And this living machine takes the liquid waste from our cafeteria and converts it into gray water using 
organisms like the native plants here in the garden and fish and snails. The process begins in the back here where we deposit the milk and juice. It overflows into the first tank which has algae and duckweed uh, and they're attached to screening. The water slowly permeates into two more tanks that have floating plants. No soil, just the plants floating in the water and the roots are absorbing the nutrients. This here that has all of this stubble sticking out, this tank is a wetland tank. It's filled with gravel up to this point and all of these plants are native plants. Native wapato, which the Native Americans used to eat like a potato, along with hedges and sedges. The water then transfers into the final tank, which is filled with fish and snails. And then when our water level gets high enough, I open up this valve at the bottom and I insert one of these pipes into this valve. And then we release the water out to the stream. This is a model system. This is only 300 gallons, but there is an actual system, a living machine, down in Astoria. It's been in existence for about three years, and uh, this system is at the Marine Center, the MERTS Center, and it takes care of all the waste, not just the liquid waste, but the solid waste and everything that they generate there at that campus site. It's pretty interesting. So when we release water from our living machine and it joins this uh, bioswale, it enters the stream and rolls under that bridge and goes out to the wetland. And that's where we're going to go next. Well, I'm walking down into our wetland and I'm coming up on the stream where the water from the parking lot and the water from the pond all drains down into this lowland area. The water drains to this point here and then starts to permeate into the soil. It gets to a depth of about a foot or so, maybe up to my knee. And all of these plants are designed to drink up as much water as possible. These are wetland plants, all native to Oregon. And uh, the other interesting thing is they like to, like to be dried out in the summertime. So we don't have to worry about this area. This area is, is self-sustaining. This is the end result. All the rainwater comes down here from the parking lot, the roofs, and through the pond, and goes back to the earth instead of the sewer. So we believe that this garden is, has the capacity to hold much more water than we already take in. We take in about three quarters of a million gallons of rainwater annually. And I believe that this garden space could probably take on twice that much. Uh, these plants are now, their roots are established deep into the soil. So they've opened up the soil so that the rainwater can now really go down deep into the earth and return to the water tables where it belongs. Some people might ask, uh, how do you build a garden like this? And uh, to be honest with you, the way you build a garden like this is you enroll people. This garden was not built solely on money. In fact, the budget for this garden was just a fraction of what it cost to build uh, spaces like this. We were able to build this garden with seed money from the Bureau of Environmental Services at about $30,000. We ended up getting about $40,000 in kind. That meant professionals donated their time to help us build it. But the basic building of this garden was done by the hands of people in the community, the children and their parents. Came out over a year uh, and, and actually dug in and built it. Now, that's a great savings because right now we're building gardens and, and, and water sustainability at a cost almost 10 times or 20 times that amount. So I really believe that if we uh, uh, set our goals to uh, involve our community and involve our children in projects like this, that these gardens will last. They will be here for the future because if the kids and the community build these gardens, they're going to want to come back and tend to these gardens. But if they're simply built by other people as public works services, um, nobody really has a connection to them. So it's the enrollment, the enrollment that puts a garden like this together.